grew up on sort of a strange mixture of comedy and horror. I loved both of them, but at night I would watch films. My uncle, from when I was about five years old, would uh, sort of torture me and, and make me watch films on HBO after two o'clock. And uh, one of them happened to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it looked like it was filmed in our backyard, basically. <laughs> one of my earliest memories of horror movies is my mom forcing me to watch The Exorcist when I was probably six or seven years old. Ooh, that's a good and, uh, one. It was a little bizarre. I think she kind of was using it as like a religious lesson or something. I don't, I'm not really sure, but either way, it kind of messed me up. I had heard that uh, at this school, Texas A&M and Corpus Christi, that uh, the, one of the original writers of the, the original Chainsaw Massacre was teaching there, teaching production and screenwriting courses. So that's why I picked that school and moved there. And it turns out that uh, Justin was going there for the same reason. Just as we were there, the next two, three years, uh, film students under Kim Hinkle, he became a great mentor for us. Then shaped us to become uh, a little more um, vocal, and I think that's a large part of why we work so well together as co-directors, which is sort of not common. Right. You know, to, to have two uh, directors that are not brothers. Right, yeah. right. This particular story uh, really caught our eye. Uh, for a couple of reasons. It's actually a, a real legend that's been in Texas history for generations and you know it's sort of one of those things that everyone's heard of in the region. So uh, when we were starting to think of projects we remembered this uh, legend. We thought it would fit well in, in, a, in a sort of vintage horror kind of movie that it was like an homage to those old films that we grew up watching like The Legend of Broggy Creek and we wanted to do something a little more between Art House and Grindhouse maybe right in the middle and it just so happened that our first feature film was a horror film. And we made a few trips to the actual town where this uh, happened and that's where we met up with an individual by the name of Dale Rogers that uh, basically shared a whole new story uh, that uh, was a continuation I guess of sorts of the original legend. So we decided to use his journals and illustrations and stories and kind of cultivate it all into a screenplay uh, that ultimately became The Wild Man of the Navidad. We, we shot the movie over about six months, about six, six month months, period. Yeah. We did Friday through Sunday blocks for from January 2006 until about July 2006. Right. And to spend another year editing it. Yeah. We made this movie extremely bare bones. I mean, the crew was never at any point larger than four, five, six people at one mm -hmm. time. It was about a three-hour three uh, drive from Austin down to Whitsett, Texas, where we made the film. We had access to a lot of different things there, um, you know, ranches, ranch houses, uh, all kinds of colorful characters. and Tractors, uh, animals. Yeah, yeah. Just, lifts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of heavy machinery and whatnot. Yeah. We borrowed props, we found props, we asked, we put flyers up, wanted large, hairy white men. We yeah. asked for, you know, old cars. We found mechanics and just brought this whole little community kit together to, to make this movie, pretty much. I mean, it was a challenge to, to make a period movie with pretty much nothing. Did a, a lot for a little. A lot for a little. And uh, hopefully, you know, you, you agree. <laughs>